Hello, Lockport Township High School District 205, parents and guardians. My name is Dr. Bob McBride, superintendent of Lockport Township High School 205. This is your board meeting brief for the Board of Education meeting that we had right here in the Porter Room on Monday, August 19th, the first day of school for the 2024-2025 school year. Before I get into what we accomplished in the board meeting, I just want to say we had a fantastic opening of school. Thank you to your children. Thank you to all the preparation that you did to get your children here. Of course, there is so much gratitude that we have for all the work that we did to open Central up. Uh, Berglund Construction, DLA Architects, our staff getting into Central to help clean it up and set up, Lincoln Way School District helping us out, uh, our custodians, our maintenance, our grounds. Really, we put all of our efforts as a, in a district just to get that building open and it's standing tall, it's looking good. 29 ceilings demolished and replaced, three ceilings in hallways demolished and replaced. And it's really a testament to what we learned about that building, what we accomplished with that building and how we're able to move that building forward. I'll talk a little bit more about Central uh, when I share some things with you about the budget. But congratulations on a great opening of school. Let's get into that board meeting. Well, we started with some celebrations and recognitions. First and foremost, we swore in a new board member. Regrettably, on June 24th, a very good board member, Dr. Sandra, Sandra Shimon Rogers, passed away, and her loss was a real loss to our community. The board, as a result, has to go through a process of interviewing applicants. We had 12 people who applied, eight people that the board interviewed, and ultimately, the board selected Mrs. Candace Gerritsen. Mrs. Gerritsen has been involved for over a year now with some of the board work that we've been doing on finance and facilities. She was a member of the Central Advisory Committee before the referendum last March, and she is now a member of the facilities master planning process. Our Board of Education felt that she was very read in on both the challenges and the opportunities that our board has, and yesterday, evening the board voted her in as a new board member and administered the oath of office to her congratulations mrs candace garretson we also had the pleasure of swearing in and seating four student board members it's been a priority of the board of education have students at the table with them to amplify that student voice and decisions that they make we swore in two board members who will be at every monthly board meeting with the board, and that is Mia Fontanetta and Avery Kalala. We also swore in two students who will join committees that the board has. Mr. Michael Durkis will join the curriculum committee, and Ms. Wazira Shikoni will join the Finance and Facilities Committee. Congratulations to those new board members. We also had the opportunity to celebrate a now alum, Emily Doe. Emily Doe just graduated in the spring. She's off to University of Illinois at Chicago. And Emily was a national champion at Skills USA over this summer in Atlanta, Georgia. Congratulations, Emily great job to be on the national stage and best of luck in college we had many agenda items yesterday many of them celebrating the start of school what we accomplished at central accomplishments here in terms of facilities at east but we really focused in on the fiscal year 2024 2025 budget we begin that budget process all the way back in january and between january and june we build a budget for the next year in July, we publicly presented to both the Board of Education and to the public a tentative budget. We'll have to approve that at our September meeting. So the August meeting is really the time that the board takes apart the budget in public and discusses all of the issues regarding it. It is a $78 million budget. And really what the budget does is it declares to you as a public what we intend to spend in this coming school year. Later, we'll enter into a period of figuring out how we pay for it through a combination of taxes, fund balances, sometimes even through, through debt. So in the board meeting, we had many, many things to discuss. First, we had to discuss all of those expenditures. How do they add up to $78 million? We also answered many board member questions about what kind of revenue can we expect to fund that. And as many of you know, we primarily, as the kind of district that we are, receive 80 to 85% of our funding from you. 
property owners and taxpayers in the community. And we are thankful that you provide those resources to our students and to our district. A number of questions did come up about both strategy and method in terms of moving forward with the budget. One that we had to discuss was Central Campus. On May 20th, our board passed a resolution to use a combination of life safety bonds, debt, and fund balances to move forward with the most essential repairs and projects at Central. For example, included in this year's budget is $4.46 million to complete all the work we did over the summer at Central Campus. That's the project to rebuild ceilings and get Central ready to open. Why is it included in this year's budget? Well, just now, Berglund Construction is finishing up that project and we're receiving invoices to pay for that project. That really is a start at Central Campus. Our board is committed to moving forward with those absolutely most essential repairs. For example, we're looking forward to next summer where we believe we will put a new roof on Central Campus. We will change out all of the electrical supply in the building and we will take a look at all the masonry, all of the tuck pointing, all the lintels on the exterior brick in the building. So the board has to come up with a strategy of how to pay for that. Now, in many ways, that will not be paid for until next year's budget, when all of that summer work, those invoices start to come to us at about this time, August 2025. But the board also has to be thinking about its strategy. Presently, the board is using fund balances to pay for work at Central. For example, that 4.46 million, that is coming out of existing fund balances, so that cost is not passed on to you as a taxpayer. Additionally, the board has allocated 10 to $12 million to start projects at Central, such as a renovation for the CCC and Lockport Academy programs, and to improve Americans with Disability compliance also, those fund balances, those upfront expenditures, because they come out of fund balances, would not impact you as a taxpayer. Eventually, the board is intent on something called life safety bonds. That is debt so that the board can do additional improvements to Central Campus, like the roof that I mentioned, the electrical, the exterior of Central. The most necessary and basic things to house students in that building. We also had a discussion about something that we started last year related to our budget, and that's a fancy uh, budgetary phrase called debt service abatement. What is that? Basically, we have very low debt right now, and we're in a position where our annual debt payments, which are about $1.3 million, we could abate that back to the taxpayers, meaning we use fund balances, not a tax levy on you, to pay those debt payments. What would that do? Well, that would be about a $40 to $50 discount on the portion of your property taxes that you pay to Lockport Township High School District 205. Might not seem to be much. You might not notice it on your total tax bill in 2025, but our Board of Education directed myself and our Director of Business Services, Stephanie Croy, to include that debt service uh, abatement in this upcoming budget because they feel anything, no matter how modest, to help with uh, tax relief is important for you as taxpayers. We will, coming into September, approve that final budget. I feel in a very rich conversation that we had last night about our budget, we have a good direction from our board. The final thing we discussed is salaries. It's the largest single expenditure being in a human being business that we have. And board members noticed that over the years, we have not substantially increased the amount that we are paying towards salaries. We're increasing salaries, increasing the amount that the district pays towards salaries and budgets by less than 3%, far ahead of many, many under other industries. And we do that by controlling hiring and controlling who, who we hire. All of that is in consideration of our budget. Will it be approving it at our September board meeting? So I hope that you as a public 
tune in, go to Board Docs on our district website. You can see the tentative budget for yourself. Thanks for being engaged in that process. We've had a great start of the school year and I could only imagine what is ahead. Again, thank you so much for what you've done to support us, prepare your students, get there and get the school year off the ground. Go Porters.